Mr. Honorable Philip J. Pierre, Speaker of the House, President of the Senate, my cabinet colleagues, senators, I see the former Minister of Agriculture, welcome. Fishers, other invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, let me see a pleasant good afternoon to you. I am very excited today because a long, outstanding, critical project to the fishers has come to an end. Today, I am excited that I am part of a ceremony for the ribbon cutting of a project that has been long in the waiting. I remember when I came in as Minister for Agriculture, I saw what was called a floating jet. And from that time, I knew because that jetty was placed on the Atlantic side of St. Lucia, its lifespan would not be for too long. Immediately after a few weeks, I was informed that the jetty had collapsed and it was not effective anymore. In 2022 sometime when we were handing over the fisheries facility to the fishers in Savants Bay, the Prime Minister made an announcement and indicated that the people, the fishers of Miku, will be getting a new wooden jetty. The Prime Minister mentioned that and immediately after we began putting things in place to ensure that it happens. Today I'm very excited and very happy for our fishers that the challenges in the past where they had to move manually the gas and other equipment that they need for fishing. They had challenges, they had to go in the water very early in the morning. And just imagine a fisher has to leave in port 5, 5.30 in the morning sometimes. Sometimes they go to the flats very early in the morning and they had to swim to take the equipment to the boat. I'm very happy we have been able to get to where we are today and the experiences and the challenges our fishers faced in the past has come to the reality that the jetty has been able to solve all that problem. But Mr. Um, Mr. Chair, I will leave this and others, other things to see for the parliamentary rep because I know he has been very concerned about this project. But I want to just go further to indicate that there are more in store for our fishers. In the next few weeks, in the next few weeks, we will be giving one ice machine to each of the 10 landing sites in St. Lucia. And that includes Miku North. We have already given to the fishers in the last year or so 10 fads, what we call the fisheries aggregating device. And we are going to give before September another 10 more fads to our fishers. We are going to commence very shortly a boat masters training program for our fishers. And that is going to be targeting almost 100 fishers from all over the island. And the marine unit will be training those fishers free of charge at the end where they will be getting a certificate as a boat masters fisherman. On the various boats, because we know our fishers go out late and they come back very late, we will be placing navigation lights on most of our boats so that when our fishers are in distress or there are issues with, if, with, with regards to cloudy conditions, visibility issues, they will be able to use those navigation lights to be able to get back to shore. Mr. I'm sorry, I'm thinking I'm in the house of <laughs> We will be offering our fishers what we call grab bags. And I'm sure you've seen our fishers with those little containers, with those red caps, where they have their fishing line, they have their, their food and stuff. But we'll be providing them with bags with what we call, and in those bags we'll have lines, they will have life jacket, they will have a radio and, and, and other telecommunication equipment to be able to communicate when they are in distress 
and those bags will be placed in those boats so our fishers will utilize them in during the, the time of uh, at sea. The Mr. Speaker, um, last week Friday, I don't know what I'm thinking, I mean, I'm <laughs> last week Friday, we had a check and the over ceremony to 244 farmers who suffered as a result of unavailability of books. Now, I want to take time to thank the Prime Minister for making those funds available and provide some much needed relief to our farmers. Just on Monday, three days after we did that, we launched a major farm labor program where we have currently 112 persons employed to assist farmers on the farms, and we have targeted 175 farms. Today we are here again for the ribbon cutting ceremony. But on Monday, I will be hopefully at the airport in Viewfort to receive 154 animals coming to St. Lucia to facilitate the operation at the Volant Agricultural Station. Oh, awesome. We will continue to provide much less support to our greenhouse farmers and we are hoping to get some new greenhouses and to assist farmers with rehabilitation of greenhouses. We will be, and we have started, distribution of 500 water tons to our livestock farmers and we've increased that number by another 500, just like our Prime Minister did for the farmers. <laughs> We will also be giving to the crop farmers another 1,000, 1,000 gallon water tanks to assist them in the agricultural enterprise. So, Mr. Speaker, we have a lot in we have a lot in stock for our farmers and fishers and the entire agricultural sector. And I don't know if it's because I'm so excited because I feel very good as a minister to be making those pronouncements that our farmers, our fishers, and everybody in the agricultural sector will continue to benefit from this government. This government is a government that puts people first. I mean, understand very clearly the importance of our farmers in terms of food security. Just like our fishers, they are making a big contrib contribution to food and nutrition security. And we must continue to focus on reducing our food import bill ensuring that we can continue our populace to grow what we need and to eat what we do. So I'm very excited today and I must say a big thank you to the Prime Minister and the Cabinet and everybody who made this happen. Looking forward to our officials using the jetty wisely for the day-to-day -day operations. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Master of Ceremonies, Prime Minister, the Honourable Philip J. Pierre, President of the Senate, Senator Albina Reynolds, Speaker of the House, the Honorable Claudius Francis, colleague, members of cabinet, Attorney General, dignitaries, invited guests, villagers, a wonderful good afternoon to all of you. Today, I am personally, personally excited. Excited by the fact that we have returned here to Miku just over a month when we broke ground on the proposed Miku jetty. Of course, there may have been doubters who may have felt that it wouldn't happen. There may have been those who felt that, well, the idea was around for a long time, but it just happened to be happening now at this time. But this afternoon is a manifestation of a commitment of the government of this country. A commitment made, a promise made, a promise delivered, a promise fulfilled. And that is the key point for us here this afternoon. Because while some may come at times when it's convenient to deliver trinkets, we here came and saw a need the parliamentary representative saw a need for the jetty. He saw the need for the fishers to have a facility that is convenient, that is strategically located, 
that can facilitate the craft, the craft of fishing. And so the parliamentary representative, in whom I'm very well pleased, came to cabinet almost every Monday. And I said so at the groundbreaking ceremony. Every Monday, and I say to harass the, the Minister for Agriculture, to torment the Minister for Infrastructure, and to continue to rub in the need for the jetty to the Prime Minister who holds the purse strings. He has made his point, he has made the promise, and today he is delivering. And I'm proud of him. I'm proud of him based on his commitment, his passion, and his conviction. And I believe with that kind of culture, that kind of behavior, that level of commitment to the cause and the needs of the people, I believe the Honorable Jeremiah Norbert has a very bright future in politics here in this country. And so as Minister responsible for infrastructure, I am also very well pleased to have been in the background giving the necessary support to the Department of Infrastructure. And to demonstrate this today, we have the Permanent Secretary here with me, Ms. Lenita Joseph. We have the Chief Engineer, Ms. Renata Felgens mckee And you have the Buildings Unit um, head, the head of the Buildings Unit, and his officer, all of whom have come here today after weeks, after weeks of giving support, giving guidance, giving technical assistance to the construction of this jetty, which today looks immaculate. But the jetty is part of what the chairman said, 2024, 2025, the year of infrastructure. It's a year that we as a government has demonstrated a commitment to augmenting the infrastructure in this country, whether it's roads, bridges, culvert, drainage, rivers and ravines, but of course, whether it's walks and jetties, we as a government are committed. And so this jetty forms part of that initiative for the year of infrastructure, the year in which we are looking to see where we have had a deficit in infrastructure and to fix it. Therefore, this jetty today, for you, the people of Miku and the fishers, I believe it's only the catalyst for the further development of the waterfront here in Miku to bring in more facilities, not only a toilet block, but in addition to jetty, other activities that will encourage the villagers and the other communities around Miku to come and to participate in the culture in the activities and the economic advancement and social development of the people of Miku. That, I believe, this budget will facility. And so, I do not want to spend too much time. Today is not my day. Today is Jeremiah's day. I believe he must be given sufficient time to come and to demonstrate his commitment and to show how well he's serving you, the people of the village of Miku, and to be able to deliver. I want to extend my best wishes to him and to say congratulations to he and to the villagers. And I look forward to returning to Miku, not only probably to sit on the dock of the bay and probably fish, but to also to come here and to participate in the activities that this jetty will generate in the weeks and months to come. I thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I know today, if I miss anybody in my greetings, that I am deserving of being forgiven. So I'll take my chances. But I want to acknowledge the presence of the Prime Minister, the President of the Senate, the Speaker, my Cabinet colleagues. They, I want to say a special welcome to Ms. Lenita Joseph and her team from Infrastructure, Mr. Charlemagne, um, the Chief Engineer, the people from Agriculture. Um, my future folks, but most importantly, warm good afternoon to the people of Mikud North. I want you to look around and look at Mikud. And you know, usually when you come to a forum as big as that, you know, somebody expects you to have a speech. And I thought probably, you know, I should prepare a speech. But PM, I can tell you, 
I said, I know the story behind this jetty all too well. It's etching my mind. It's going to be there forever. I need no piece of paper for to tell the people of Miku about that jetty and that washroom. We have to ask, how did we get here? We came into office. Before we came into office, we were on the idlers in Miku at the end of Philadelphia Road. My guest speaker at the time I was a candidate was the Honorable Alva Baptiste and the man of the hour himself, the Honorable Philip Joseph Pierre. He addressed the people of Miku on that platform. And I remember we promised the people, we promised the fishermen of Miku that when we got into office, that we were going to give them a jetty. We promised them. And when we got into office after July 2021, I went to the Prime Minister and I said, we promise and I'm ready to deliver. And I was told by the Minister of Agriculture that they already planned for a jetty. And we all know the story of that jetty. And when he told me that it was a floating jetty, I will be honest and say that I was disappointed. I was extremely disappointed. Not because I'm a marine biologist or I have any degree in anything to do with marine, but because of the relationship that I have with the fishermen of Mikud North. And my relationship with them would allow them to tell me that the conditions here are not favorable for a floating jetty. And notwithstanding, that I agitated and I said, you know what, I cannot accept a floating jetty for the fishers of Miku. I was told that this jetty had already been procured and there was almost absolutely nothing that we could have done to stop the project at the time. And I want to thank the people of Japan for the gift because it was a donation from the people of Japan. Notwithstanding, and I always say it and I will say it every time I get an opportunity to, my hope when the floating jetty was being installed, my hope, my only hope, was that this jetty was going to be fit for purpose and that the fishermen of Miku were going to be once and for all, free from all. I need you to look at, just look at what is behind me. And imagine a fisherman on a morning without a jetty has to pass through this sargasm to get to his boat. And I thank God that the conditions are the way that they are today. So everybody can see firsthand they can see for themselves what it is that fishermen had to experience on a day-to-day -day basis for them to ply their tree. And the floating jetty came, and the floating jetty floated away. And I said, I remember when the floating jetty came, when I came by the bay. And I always say, sometimes we have to remember, yes, we are politicians, yes, we may have our political sides, but when it comes to issues that affect the livelihoods of people. Sometimes we have to put our political biases aside for the betterment of the people. And there were people here. And I know, and I know, and I can say that. And I say that with no fear of contradiction. There are people who are praying, hoping in their heart that this jetty would never become a reality. Bon Dieu qui met. Bon Dieu qui met. And I've stood have stood on the promise of God and he has continued to deliver and he has just started delivering. Bon Dieu qui met. There are persons who pray and even now there are persons who see the jetty and they're still in disbelief. They don't want to believe that this is the jetty. Jetty a killer. Jetty a killer. Lani moon kapet some ele swe because your father is a jetty. Ek mwen di moun, si se jetty a ki mou feme ga eleksyon. Si c'est Jetty qui me fait une élection, si c'est ça, bon Dieu qui mène ça, c'est pas un homme. So même si Jetty est là, Jetty est là, je ne peux pas faire des choses parce que je veux faire des élections. Je ne peux pas faire des choses parce que je ne peux pas faire des choses. Je ne peux pas faire des choses parce que c'est péché à briser. Je ne peux pas faire des choses parce que c'est important pour le développement communautaire, le comité que je peux représenter. So I don't do these things because I'm looking for political favors or I'm trying to gain political points. I do it because it is important, it is necessary. And when you, when you come here and you see the plight of a fisherman, if you had don't break for this fisherman, chop us at Jamaica, say And that is why, that is why, 
I did not play. And the Prime Minister can tell you. Yes, he, he often said, Minister, be patient. Minister, it will happen. But if there is one thing he always promised me is that he's going to deliver it for me. And Prime Minister, I say thank you. I want people to understand the Prime Minister that is in front of me today. Because, you see, we have persons who are involved in all sorts of things. They try to malign, they try to fabricate, they try to formulate because you see when good things are happening, they try to distract you. They try to get your attention somewhere else because we have so much good happening. We have a Prime Minister who did not cause a shortage of boxes in this country. He did not cause it. He did not cause a shortage of banana boxes, but he found the compassion in his heart to give the farmers a million dollars in compensation. And you look at this Prime Minister, compared to a man who asks you to go and plant bananas because he has found a market for you in France. He, by his own words, caused you to go and plant bananas. And when you had no market, they gave you no compensation. And you tell me, I will ever move away from labor? I will ever move away from this prime minister? And it's not just the Jets, you know. I remember an afternoon, I was right in the corner by Gobix. And Pope Paul and some other men were over there. And they said, what's man, how can I feel about the um, toilet cellar? Because the fishermen, every now and then, they had to go to the laundry facility. And you can imagine fresh mixing with where you're washing your clothes. And, and it was just not hygienic. And this building was here. And I know, and I can say it here, there was no allocation then for the Miku washroom facility. And when I went to the Prime Minister, I said, Prime Minister, I can't have my fishermen just going all around the place. We need to make sure that the place, one by one, we need to develop the fishing complex in Miku North. And he said, Minister, find the money. He spoke to the Minister of Agriculture, find the money and give the man his washroom in Miku North. <laughs> that is the Prime Minister who understands. He puts himself in the shoes of individuals. I had my challenges. I had some obstacles to overcome during the process. And that is why I want to say a special thank you to Miss Renata, Renata Mackey, Miss Lenita Joseph, um, the building unit from infrastructure. Because even when I got obstacles and hurdles, other places, they made it their business, your face is fair you, to where that one way or the other, the people of Miku North gets their jetty. I also want to commend um, Complete Marine Services, because Julian Alfred that jetty happened in record time. And it did not just happen in record time, you know. We have material here because Oh, Potokila, Sabakai Fesekla, and I wish that the contractor would have spoken about the quality of materials that was used to build this jetty in Miku. And I've, also, I've always said that. C'est pas même si moi v'là cadeau that mon kai ba mwen n'importe sa yo v'là by se moun mwen kriye yo cadeau. I will not accept it. I'm only going to accept for the people of Miku what they deserve. And that is quality and standard. So I thank CMS for using the best quality marine treated material to build the jetty. And they use, I can tell you, from my own conversation with the contractor, that the material that they use here is better than what they utilize in Prale. It's better than what they utilize in Savants Bay. So I can openly boast that this jetty is bigger and stronger than what already exists in Prale and in Savants Bay. And that is what we get for Miku with a representative like Jeremiah Norman. And I will accept nothing less for my fishermen. That is why the washroom you can see here, I say my public festival, I put it on the side. I want a good washroom for the fishermen. I want a good facility. I remember when the conversation started, they were speaking about putting galvanized on the roof. And we refused. We said we had galvanized already. It rot. And we want to ensure, given at the close proximity to the bay, that we want a nice deck roof. And Mr. Window listened. Mr. Hart listened. Uh, Mr. Charmaine listened. And they gave us a proper facility. So with that, I want to say 
Thank you to everyone who have been involved in this project. I want to also implore the fishermen that I want to tell you that it costs money. It takes time. And you have exercised patience with me. I've gone to the Prime Minister and he has delivered. But we also have a responsibility to take care of what we have. We cannot vandalize it, we cannot mash it up, and tomorrow come and say, oh, bye, go bed, Makila. That's not how it works. And the same way I'm going to go and make noise and agitate on your behalf. Thank you to everyone who It is yours, it is your responsibility to maintain and keep it looking in a way that is cyclic. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to say, I know I became a little emotional, but I had no choice, I had to. Because those who understand the struggle that I had to go through to be where I am today, to be able to get the jetty for the fishermen and the struggle was not with the minister of finance i always said that that was the easiest part as soon as we spoke about it he agreed that he was going to finance it but there will always be persons who are naysayers there will always be people who don't believe they say seeing is believing look and see what the lord has done there is something that's happening in this country a number Excuse me, let me recognize um, my friend Cassius Silas, who was parliamentary rep. There is something happening in this country. Things are happening so fast that people are wondering what is happening. Last week, Friday, we gave 28 vehicles to the police. That was at 10 o'clock in the morning. At 12 o'clock, we were delivering 20 odd booths to vendors. That was on the same Friday. <laughs> then, at 4 o'clock in, in the afternoon, we were given a million dollars worth of checks to farmers in this country. All in one Friday. And this Friday, we are delivering a jetty to the people of Mikuno. And I will tell you what will happen next Friday. Because while people try to disrupt our country, we are building it and we are working to improve it. We are working to improve our country. And that is why I don't want you to get disturbed. I don't want you to get concerned because you can see it for yourself. I don't know what Friday we're going to do it, but on a Friday, we are going to complete and open the Prale School for the young people, the Pastor School for the children, the Pastor preschool. That's going to happen on a Friday. I can't tell you exactly what Friday, but I know that work is going on in the Pasha school, preschool, and we are going to open it on a Friday. So, my brothers and my sisters, I came here some time ago in 2021 and I saw the condition of fishers in this constituency. We were not the ones who called Sagazo. You know anything that happens in this country? C'est Pierre qui fait. So la pluie va tomber, Pierre qui fait ça. La no job, Pierre qui fait ça. We never up, pas fait fig, but Pierre qui fait ça. So I came and I saw the state of the sarcasm in this area. And the officials had not only go in the water, but to find their way through that sarcasm. And I said to myself, why, why, why? We are not the one who caused the sarcasm, but we can improve the circumstances for these people. Because we had already built two jetties. One in Prale, 
and another in Sabansby. And I want to note the contribution of the former Minister of Agriculture, Dr. Moses Jabati. So we have done these two jetties. And why didn't the people of Miku North have a jetty that they deserve? The question you must ask yourself is why? Why do the people of Miku North deserve a floating jetty that would have floated away because the conditions in that area were not conducive to a floating jetty? Why? But you know, History has a strange way of finding its own level. And this gentleman, Jeremiah Norbert, your parliamentary rep, I can tell you, you've made a good choice and you should keep that choice for a long time. And I have promoted Jeremiah to make him a minister in the cabinet. And he's a minister for home affairs, and I'll tell you what that means. He's in charge of the fire service. All the ambulances, all the first responders, Jeremiah is the minister. And we have just invested literally millions of dollars in the fire service of St. Lucia, which he has to take care of. He's also in charge of Baudelaire. I called him yesterday and he told me he was at Baudelaire. Many guys said, I'm you, I will do. <laughs> Calling the minister, asking where you are, he says, I'm in Baudelaire. <laughs> you see, that is the commitment he has to that cause. And you know, Baudelaire is a place where people are, people live there. And we have to ensure that when they come out, they come out better than they went in. And that is what Jeremiah has to say about. But most importantly, he is a minister for people with disabilities. And that is arguably one of the most important ministries in the cabinet. Because he is the one who has to take care of people who were not born with the benefits that some of us have. And disabilities come in several ways. You're the mega, mega big A. That means I may have a disability. So when we take these things and we try to, because of cheap politics, we try to belittle it. We try to make it look as if that is nothing. All over the world, we were congratulated when we had a portfolio for people with disabilities. And I'm sure with the work ethic, with the work ethic of Jeremiah Norbert, you will see that people with disabilities will have a better quality of life in this country. Because he has already begun to push, to push for these people. And I'm sure. On another Friday, we might be coming here to open something for people with disabilities. So, according to the senior minister, I am well pleased with this minister. But he has to push it. There's a lot to, there's a lot to be learned. A lot of negativity in this country. A lot of negativity. There are a lot of people who will try to diminish his contribution. But What's important is delivery. And in, in this year of infrastructure, we will be delivering. I know you have issues with the La Point Road. I see the man jump as I see La Point Road. You see, if I start saying roads, everybody will talk about roads. So, I'll tell you one thing. I'll tell you one thing. When I come back here on a Friday to open a road, it's going to be a road in Mikunov. So I'm pleased, I'm very happy, pleased to be here. 
I understand that you have a Friday, Friday night, once a month. You must make it an activity where you can use what you have in this area. We are tired of having to import everything. You have fish, you have things on the ground, let's use it. Let us create business activity. Let us show the talent that we have with the musicians, etc. And I tell you something, I have confidence in Jeremiah. I have confidence in the people of St. Lucia. And I believe, and I know, that St. Lucia and Mikunov will be a better place because of people like Jeremiah. Yeah. And I make no bones about it. The proof of the eating is in the pudding. And you will see, we will deliver to the people of St. Lucia. We have started to deliver, we will continue to deliver. And the next big Friday opening we'll have is at the St. Jude Hospital. Yeah. And we're going to do St. Jude Hospital on a Friday. Because I like the Friday idea. Although some of my colleagues in the media tell me Friday is not a good day. But I think I like Friday. So, not next Friday, but I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Omid will set me up. He tell me I say next Friday. <laughs> not next Friday. But you know, St. Jude Hospital is something that they never believe will happen. But I'll tell you something. I'll tell you something very, very soon. Not giving you a date. But very, very soon, because things are getting ready. We have one more, one small step, one only. And when we deal with that, I'll be able to come and tell you on what Friday we open in St. Jude Hospital. Because St. Jude Hospital will open. St. Jude Hospital will be completed on a Friday. So my sisters and my brothers, I'm very, very pleased. I'm pleased. I am pleased with where our country is going. Do not get diverted. There are people who hope that our country will never progress. So. They connive and they make plans and they try all kinds of things because they do not want our country to prosper. They don't want your children to get laptops to, to go to school. They don't want that to happen. They don't want you to have better facilities. They don't want you to have a better quality of life. So they connive with people far and wide to disrupt your country. They spread bad news and propaganda. They do all kinds of things. They want you to lose your status overseas because they want your country to go down because they are not the ones that you, the people, chose. You chose Jeremiah and Jeremiah will work for you because you chose him. So stay focused. Keep your eye on the prize. Stay focused. Stay focused. Protect the victory. Because if you did not, if you do not, or if you did not protect the victory, you will not have that jetty today. It's because you protected the victory. So my sister and my brother, I want to thank the fisher people and the people of Miku for being patient with us. For being patient, having to wait for this necessity. They were patient, I want to thank them. And I want to say, as the Minister of Agriculture says, there are many, 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 many more things for the fisher people in this country and for the farmers of St. Lucia. Many, many more things. 
So thank you very much. Enjoy yourself and congratulations.